Hi everyone, in this video I will show you how to use an embroidery brush. First of all, you need to install it if you don't have one. Choose two files, embroidery brush SPPR and embroidery reference SBSR. Then drag and drop them to Substance Painter. Leave all settings as is and choose where you like to import them. You can choose current session, project or library. I recommend you to choose library, because you may want to use them in future. Hold the left mouse button, then press Alt to project this material as decal. Alright, we have placed an image. Now let's take a look at the settings. There are not so many settings, but we need all of them. Here is the default rows as an example. We can use it, but of course, we can change it to our custom image. Let's do this. Choose any image you want. I have picture of a bird, for example. Drag and drop it to Painter. Mark it as a texture. And import it to current project. Import. Put image here. And it appears here. Alright, we put an image. The next. This material has different modes for displaying an image. It can show it as a reference, or it can turn your image to cross-stitch embroidery. It has this option, <laughs> just for fun, <laughs> why not? <laughs> the next setting allows you to reduce range of colors in your image. It's important, because in real life, you only have the limited colors for your thread. Therefore, you cannot do an embroidery using million colors of an image. And it's not comfortable to pick any needed colors. That's why we're clicking on this button and seeing that our image has posterized. Drag the slider to choose the total amount of colors. Don't choose so many because it will be close to our original image and it means that we can't have the same color of, of threads in real life. And don't choose too less because it's starting to look weird. Let's select something in between. The colors must be bright, contrasty, and beautiful. Let's tap on this amount. But probably we won't use all of them. Anyway, this mode allows us to pick and use these colors in our embroidery. Well, we have set up our reference. Before we start an embroidery, let's do an additional layer. It will help to create guidelines for our threads. Create a fill layer, we need only color from it. Let's choose a bright color, green for example. Then add a black mask. Choose the brush color, white. So now we need to draw guidelines. Because during an embroidery process, we could not notice borders of elements and their orientation. That's why let's draw them. So now, everything we need to do is to set the brush radius and choose color for the thread. Also, I recommend you to set up FUPI recursor to see which type of pattern you are currently use. You can pick any color you want, but I recommend you to use bright colors. They look better in embroidery. Also, we need to reduce height of the layer to 20, for example. Now pick next color and draw using it. After completing the draft, Let's clean up borders. We may keep embroidery reference layer. It will help to fill empty spaces. What are we living for? <laughs> to clean abandoned parts. Add white mask to embroidery reference. And clean everything we don't need. Now let's create contours using thick threads to add more completed and readable look to our embroidery. Add a new layer and name it Contours. Choose Embroidery Brush again. 
and select golden edge button. And reduce height for this layer too. I plan not to do golden contours inside the bird. Let's create them using threads. In this case we can choose second pattern. This is a triple thread. And pick colors from reference. We can hide paint layer. And again, choose the brightest colors. Eyes and wings I wanna do with beads. Alright, we have embroidered the bird, but we haven't considered all possible settings of the embroidery brush. Let's take a look at them. We will look, we will show, we will understand. Let's create a new layer to test all these settings. If we choose nothing, we will see a red thread. We can set up color. We can set up overlay color. What is that? If we have white color and we drag random hue slider, it happens nothing. But it happens when the overlay color is not white, black or grayish. If we make it pale red, and random hue is active. We will see a color variation stamps when we're painting. It could be useful in case when you're using beads. With these beads, for example, it adds some diversity to your strokes. Back to the thread. Set overlay color as white and set random hue as it was. Random saturation and random luminance are depend on the overlay color too. So they work when overlay color is not white, is not black and is not grayish. It requires saturation to make variations work. The next setting is roughness. If roughness value is small, we'll receive more glossy result. If you add metallic, you receive something similar to silk. If you make it completely metallic, you'll receive brocade. Also, you can set up number of twists for the thread. There is one for default. So if we add some, we will get a new thread. Add once more and we will get the perfect brush for the contours. The next setting is fluffiness. And it makes your thread fluffy. It means that we can imitate wool threads. Increase both sliders to the max and receive a super fluffy thread. It could be useful if you're embroidering a sweater. Why not? Shadow Intensity This setting is commonly used when you have the dark background. To see how it works, let's add a new layer and make it dark grey. Put it under the embroidery layer. It still looks pretty not bad, but in some cases we may want the thread looks more harmonic to the background. Dragging this slider, we are increasing shadow intensity. And the relief intensity is responsible for normal map and high map intensity. Each pattern may have individual settings. If you hover your mouse cursor on any setting, you receive a description of this setting. Let's move to the next button. This is the triple thread. Let's decrease relief intensity too. All settings you are set for the first brush. 
are suitable for this brush too, with the only difference that this brush is much twisted. It also allows you to set number of twists. You can use it for contours too. The next pattern is horizontal stitch. It has the same settings as previous, and it has a setting for number of threads. You can make them more dense or less, and you'll get a rise stitch. Or dot line. The next we have different decoration elements. There are several types of them, and they have own settings. Some of them are the same for the threads, some of them are unique. For example, this one. I named them as apples or donuts, because <laughs> they are really look like donuts or apples and they are have different color settings green color and the second color the color of the rope which is holding it on the fabric and the same setting for these cylinders you can set up color for cylinder and set up color for rope the same for the big bits and the last pattern is small bits it has three customizable colors so you can set up first, second and third color. For example, third color is blue. You can note that each new pattern is unique. This happens because random set setting for this brush is active. So if you don't need this setting, or if you are experiencing performance issues, go to Dynamic Stroke tab and change random zip type setting. It means that each new stamp of your brush will be randomly seeded. You may change it to random per stroke, and it will choose a random seed for each stroke, not for each stamp. Or you can set it to single, and it will mean no randomness for your stamps. To receive more natural results, I recommend you to leave random per stamp. But if your brush becomes laggy, unresponsive, you can reduce random sample amount. 64 is for default, you can choose smaller amount, until performance issues disappear. If you have a quantum computer, set it for unlimited and enjoy. Also, pay attention that these patterns, which have several color settings, have several settings for roughness and metallic. For example, you want green bead or a metal, a glossy metal, the second bead were glossy but non-metal, and the third bead were made. It is fully possible. So that's all what I wanted to say about the embroidery brush. If you want to get one, you can find it on my Gumroad page. It is waiting for you. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.